basically we were looking at um, how a cell is the smallest unit in a body and just like that you know a cell group if we would say it's, it's a small unit in the in the church like uh, in the body of christ and um, and uh, it is very effective as a as a model as a uh, as a discipleship model right because we're talking about discipleship we're talking about how one can follow uh, the lord effectively and how we also looked at the path of a believer from being a disciple to coming to a place of uh, being from 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 a believer to coming to a place of a disciple to a place of being a minister and uh, to come to the place of being leaders right uh, raising up leaders themselves raising up ministers themselves so we, we we saw that path now that path can be effectively done in a small group ministry so um, so that is what that is why that is the whole objective of of this course right to find out okay um to study more about this model of uh, small group ministry and how can we do it right so um today let's look at um, you know some of these churches which uh, have uh, you know in the past which uh, have started what is called uh, you know what you can call as a cell church right so their entire ministry uh, the was was focused like you know sometimes we this is how we can look at it you no know? sometimes we say okay we are a church this is the you know vision of the church and cell group is part of it you know it's something that we do on the side you know to help believers fellowship to build the sense of community etc it's something that it's one of the program one of the many programs of the church right uh, whereas um, you know these churches that we uh, you know a couple of churches that we're going to look at they um they started and they followed you know a cell group model for ministry in the sense that everything that they did uh whether it's whether it was outreach whether it was uh, discipleship uh, in and in everything that they did uh, st- study they did through the cell groups now it's not like they did not meet um you know as a church because these are big churches uh they did meet on you know on sundays they had their times of worship and uh, you know time of uh, uh, time in the word and all that they did meet but a lot of things happened some of the you know fundamental things happened uh, through the cell group right through the small groups so that is what we're going to look at okay let me just uh, share the screen okay okay so that's what you see so so these are some examples of um cell churches okay the f- first one is the yoido uh, full gospel church in seoul korea now you know i think uh, most of us know about um this church we've heard so much about it um you know one of the largest churches in the world started by uh, paul yongi cho you know david uh, yongi cho um so he started it in 1958 now um so he was actually uh, you know ministering he had a big vision um and he was uh, you know uh, doing a lot of hard work in terms of uh, meeting people praying for them uh, sharing the gospel and uh, and he was doing this you know all by himself and uh, and a few others uh, helping so he was doing this but um he was uh, literally he was you know he, he became so exhausted in ministry tired and uh, and that is when you know he was inspired and uh, god led him to start uh, start what is what we call now as cell groups right uh, so um this scripture 18 uh, sorry exodus 18 and verse 21 you know you shall select from all the people able men such as fear god men of truth hating covetousness and uh, place such over them to be rulers of thousands rulers of hundreds rulers of fifties and rulers of tens so um so this is something that uh, he started you know initially with the women and then it it spread so uh, so these were small groups and they were meeting regularly for prayer so he was training the 
leaders and who would again you know who would uh, minister to the people in the cells so rather than him visiting uh, paul young jo himself visiting let's say 10 families or six other families now in the cell group they, they let let's say for example there are six families that are meeting you know like say 12 people or maybe 15 people now instead of him uh being the pastor meeting each one of these families and uh, you know trying to disciple them trying to build them up uh he would train one person who will be the cell group leader and that leader would in turn lead others would uh, in turn disciple others right in the cell group so um so this is what he did and he started and and the cell groups grew the church grew to around uh, you know at that time it was around 750000 and definitely today it's it's definitely i'm sure more than that right? they have around 65000 cell groups so just imagine the size of that right 65000 cell groups so uh, a cell group in which there would be prayer a cell group in which there would be study of god's word there would be fellowship there would be worship there would be outreach um, you know everything uh, would be happening there in the cell group which will be meeting there right and all the cell groups are connected back to the church that's the most important thing you know it's not a individual in uh, you know uh, a bible study it's or it's not a group that is meeting to do something else which is apart from what the church is um, church is vision is right they are in line with the vision of the church because the cell group leader is uh, is again trained and there's an impartation and and leading that's coming from the pastor uh, to the cell group leader and the cell group leader is in turn accountable you know back to the church uh church is leadership uh and they uh continue to uh, minister to the others right so so the even though the church grew to such huge numbers because of the cell model of a ministry you know people still would feel connected to the church right people would feel that they would belong to the church it's no more you know and not just a spectator who's coming on a sunday um just coming and visiting and watching something and going back but i'm an integral part of the church because i'm an integral part of the cell group right so this is something uh, that we read about uh, yoyo full gospel church the other church is uh, in um, uh, the international charismatic mission in uh, in colombia um pastor cesar cesar castellanos right um, so similarly um groups of 12 like the cell group would have 12 and uh, 12 people and uh, and these cell groups would would be involved in evangelism uh, these cell groups would be in, involved in discipleship and everything right so uh, so we see that they were quite successful uh, models of discipleship um like we saw you know, a, a, a lot of good things happen when the church gathers together as a whole as a as a congregation the lord you know pours out a spirit and when we worship together um the 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 manifest presence of god the release of the gifts everything that we that we enjoy and receive uh you know uh, a lot of answers and everything um well it it has its purpose and a lot of good things happen right but also we see that there are certain things that cannot happen in the sense suppose i have a question and which i need to be answered now i cannot do it in that church service right i'll have to do it uh, you know on my own uh, i may not be able to discuss certain things i may not be able to share certain things i may not be able to um you know of course prayer we 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 know that that can happen right there could be prayer leaders and you could go and get prayed for or pray for others now that could happen but uh this kind of uh, you know uh detailed study uh this kind of uh, training in the gifts uh, all that will happen effectively in a smaller group right 
So, um, so this is the cell model or the cell group model with G these churches seem to have pioneered. Of course, we see in the book of Acts and that was what they brought in you know, to their ministry. And they said, okay, this is something that we're going to be serious about. This is something that is going to be uh, at the forefront of our ministry. It's not like one of the programs of the church, but is, it is the program or the main thing in the church, right? We're going to, um, you know, encourage people to be part of cell groups because, you know, uh, cell group is an important part. So, so this is something, and these are some of the other churches that have also, um, you know, uh, uh, put in put in place what we call as a G12 or group of 12 model, uh, which is uh, exactly uh, what is followed by the, in, uh, you know, the International Christian Mission um, of uh, Pastor Cesar Castellanos, Castellanos um, in Colombia, right? Uh, in the Charismatic Mission, sorry. So... Now we need to understand that uh, while these are very effective models, uh, that, that is the G12 principle uh, of cell group ministry, these are quite effective models. Now there is no perfect church. Okay, there's no church which is uh, every church is a work in progress, and right? every church is a work in progress. And so, um, so we we cannot say that. Uh, you know, it, it is it is perfect. No, it has its challenges. Uh, every church has its challenges. And the other thing is that, <clears throat> sorry, that um, you know, people are different. You know, wherever the church is, like even in in our own, like in India, if you see the church in the city, uh, will be different uh, from the church in maybe a, a village or a rural setting, simply because of the kind of people the kind of habits or the kind of, uh, you know, schedules that they might have, you know, like in a city like, let's say, Bangalore, um, where travel is, is going to take time. You know, the distance might be, let's say, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, but it's going to take a lot of time to reach from point A to point B because of the traffic, right? So for the church to get together very often as a big, congregation it's, it's difficult so these are some of the challenges and of course you know that well people uh, might be people are busy people are you know uh, they have different um, you know uh, time schedules maybe people are working at nights all these challenges are there right all all these um, let's say uh, characteristics are there which are different from maybe uh, in a rural setting you know which could be different where uh, you know the, where the the pace of life is different well they do have certain other you know challenges and and so on but um, you know so these are uh, these are these are things which are different and also if you take other nations you know uh, so like um, you know that in, in in india people work okay let's say 5 days sometimes 6 days uh, or you know like 6 and a half days a week right uh, so that's the kind of uh, schedule people might have. And maybe in other certain other countries, people could be working. Um, maybe it's very strictly nine to five, and then you finish on a Friday and Saturday is completely free, et cetera. So, um, so for that church and uh, for the cell groups in that particular church in that country, you know, things are a little different. So, so the thing is, uh, you know, we cannot say that, uh, Every like cell church is perfect, and it's perfectly executing, uh, you know, um, the, that model of ministry, because simply because there are variables, right? There are different things, different factors in each of these churches, each of these places. Okay, so we need to understand that. Okay, so the question is, okay, will this cell church concept or the small group ministry? Will it work in, in you know, we might have that question, okay, it might work there, but will it work here? Okay. Can I, you know, knowing how the people are in my town, in my village, in my city, can it work? Right? That is the question, right? Especially if you're thinking of a city and uh, will people meet, will people get together, um, you know, be, uh, people are busy, etc. Right. 
so the thing is that uh, here are some things to uh, some points to think about right uh, will it work okay the answer is yes because uh, regardless of you know whatever culture whatever place we are from we have been wired we have been designed for relationship for fellowship for community now we might um, you know some of us might be more open for that or we might enjoy it more but then some of us would say okay i i do need fellowship but then i want it in small doses right um, i can't spend more time that way. but then the fact is that each one of us as human beings we are designed to have fellowship with god first and foremost and to have fellowship with other people right second thing is uh, well people are hospitable and uh, people do visit others in homes and uh, you know it uh, it also helps the unsaved people suppose you uh, a person is is curious about the faith is uh, you know is not yet has not yet made a commitment to follow it is a safe place right it is a safe place for them to come and explore you know, suppose you have uh, you know a, a, a time for people who are not yet made a decision to come and explore the faith uh, and ask questions um, uh, about that right uh, about the faith about jesus so this is would be a safe this would be a safe place right? a home where they can come visit ask questions maybe they're meeting as friends maybe they're meeting as colleagues but uh, just to find out just to have uh, a discussion about the faith and to ask questions right so these are some some things some reasons why well it would work okay now um, some reality you know, or some challenges real challenges are these right uh, people work long hours people work uh, long hours sometimes you know 11 hours 12 hours in a city um so would would people still be willing right and sometimes you can you know the the the, the reasoning is that people work odd hours I mean, odd times you know like um, some i know some some people in my family who work um you know from 2 am onwards 2 am till about 1 pm right it's or sometimes a night shift uh, you know typically call centers uh, bpos they work on a different shift so will this work you know will will cell groups work uh will the answer is yes it's just that as a church uh, we need to um we need to be a little flexible and see how uh, you know maybe have a cell group which has people who are working on shifts right you have a cell group where the cell group leader and everyone is 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 working on a night shift maybe and so they would they would meet in a different time they would meet at uh, maybe 3 in the afternoon or 4 in the uh, afternoon where somebody who's on a day shift or a, you know regular 9 to 6 9 to 7 kind of a timing they would not be able to you know actually be part of that life group but a but a person who's working on a, in a call center well that's the time that they are free so yeah we can overcome these challenges by by actually uh, having a cell group which will take care of that take care of the timing take care of the um, long hours etc right and the, and the fact is that uh, we would have definitely have uh the congregation uh meeting on sundays you know we're not when uh, a cell group does not mean that only cell group meetings and no um you know coming together as a large body so well people yes people do enjoy being part of the sunday celebration or maybe other meetings so we are not saying that you know those are discontinued you know, we will continue a cell group a cell model church will continue to have that but additionally you know this would be the main thing the cell group cell church, cell groups would be a lot of emphasis a lot of importance uh, would be given to what happens in cell groups right um 
another uh, quest, uh, thing that people could say is that, okay, there would be people have their own ministries, maybe people have their own schedules and uh, they don't want to get involved, right? Uh, and they don't want to get involved in maybe ministry. They don't want to get involved in church. Um, they just want to do the bare minimum. Well, it yes, it, it, there will be many like that. Okay, or there will be some, there will be many like that. But they just need to be uh, taught, they need to know from God's word that serving in the body of Christ, it could be different ways, is actually God's plan for the believer. Right? This is God's design. The local church is God's design to be serving as a member in the body of Christ is God's is God's plan, is God's design. So the thing is to to um, to teach people that, like over a period of time, just to teach the congregation. So once they know, okay, this is something um, that God wants from my life, from me, and this is something which is good for me, where I can receive from others ministering to me, and where I can also grow and use whatever gifts of grace that God has put in my life, I can use it to strengthen others, to minister to others, to serve others. Right? So I need to come to that place of understanding. Right? I remember meeting so many, so many people you know, uh, over a period of many years uh, who, uh, who uh, you know, I'm just meeting that person uh, and then I'm saying, asking them, you know, where, so where do you worship? You know, are you new to church? And then they say, no, 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 we are, we've been coming for years. Then I'm like, oh, oh, really? So sorry. And I, I didn't know that you were um, coming for many years. And then they say, no, it's just that um, when pastor prays that last prayer, I'm, I just get up and go. You know, I don't stay back. I don't fellowship. I, I don't do any of that. I just I just leave immediately. So that's why you don't see me. Uh, I'm also not involved in anything, right? So there are many who who are like that in in in, uh, in a church. So so they just need to be taught that uh, the importance of the local church and what God can do uh, through them, in them when they are connected to the local church, right? And which also means that being part of a cell group and so on, right? Okay. Fine. So let's look at this. The, the you know what we're just calling it the APC twelve cell model because it's it's something that uh, we're doing in uh, at APC. So um, so it is for it is it is uh, formed around that G twelve model. Uh, it's adapted uh, from that G twelve model of you know, uh, international charismatic mission. Of Pastor Caesar Castellanos, and uh, so it just—it's adapted. It's not the same thing. It's changed a little bit. It's—it's it's flexible. So just calling it that. Okay. So let's look at the uh, cell group model. Okay. So uh, first of all, you know, it's not. We just need to understand that um, you know the cell group is not uh, what we call as a you know home home group meeting or even the commonly used term, you know, like a care cell, like where it could be like a mini church service. You know, if you look at a care cell or if you look at, a, um, you know, a house prayer meeting, it can be like a mini church service. You know, there'll be worship at the beginning. It'll be somebody preaching, everybody listening, and then prayer and so on. So it, this is not that. Okay. So when we say cell groups, something different happens. We would, you know, there would be, Worship, there would be prayer and so on, but there is a difference. So we look at that. Uh, so this is uh, what we need to understand. So one cell group leader is responsible for discipling, okay? Or it could be a couple. You know, if it's a married couple and they are taking uh, they are going to be leaders so it's a couple and uh, there could be six other couples you know let's say if it's a cell group for married people so it could be a couple taking care of six other couples so so in effect you have about 12 plus to 14 people in the cell groups 
right? Or if it's only single people, uh, individuals, then it's about you know, 12 plus the leader. Okay. Now this number 12, you know, we've keeping it a little flexible. You know, it could be less than 12. It could be a little over 12, maybe maximum of 15. But um, the reason we want to keep it at that is so that the discipling process can be effective. Okay. See, what happens is uh, if it's going to be just like another church service, then again, there is no personal connect. Um, by that, I mean, you know, there is no one-to-one -one interaction. Um, uh, there is no personal fellowship because people still feel would feel a little lost people still feel that you know it's uh, their needs are not being you know um, addressed uh, or uh, they may have questions and maybe they you know they won't have an opportunity because the group is very big you know so opportunity to have that addressed so so the thing is intentionally it's uh, it's 12 okay the second one is that you're committed to one cell group or you know the, the group that is led by uh, one cell group leader you know or a couple who are leading so so in the sense that the 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 church member is not going from one cell group to another cell group to another cell group you know every time you know, every week, not attending different services. I, I want to see what's happening there, or I want to see what's happening there. Well, you know, I mean, the person is free actually, but in a, uh, but the recommendation or the suggestion is that okay, you be part of one cell group. You come, we committed to one cell group. Now this could be the one that is maybe convenient for you to go, or maybe maybe you feel that okay, this is this is a place where you belong. So. You go to one cell group, you be committed to one cell group, and you grow in that cell group. You serve in that cell group. Okay, so, um, so from the point of the cell group leader, so the cell group leader is connecting with this small group of people. Okay, it, it, it's twelve, and uh, it, it's with this group of twelve. So the cell group leader is also, you know, getting to know each of them uh, knows their life, knows their testimony, um, and also is able to minister to them at an individual level if they need if they need help. Should they have questions? Should they have challenges? The cell group leader is able to minister and also, you know, take them minister, take them to a place of maturity, spiritual maturity, Christ likeness. Right, so that's uh, uh, so that also happens. So, so what happens is that over a period of time, let's say from this twelve, there are three or four people who are who have come to a place of maturity. You know, they are they are they're ready. They are they are mature. They have grown in their understanding. They have grown in character, and they are they have come to a place of uh, of ministering. Right. They've come to a place of being leaders themselves. Then the cell group, the cell group leader encourages them. And also um, there's another step, which is the, the potential cell group, the potential cell group leaders from that group, like who, who desire, who have the ability uh, and the desire to become cell group leaders. They get trained right, by the, by the pastor, they get trained uh, with short training and how to be cell group leaders, uh, what to do, what not to do, etc. And they start cell groups of their own with 12 other people. Okay, so it's six other couples or 12 other people. Sometimes it's a mix of married people and single people, so which is fine. So this is this is something that happens. Right? So. Um, so there's one leader or one leader couple, and uh, you know. Uh, so these are some features that we need to understand. There's one leader or one leader couple who are leading six or six other couples, or you know, twelve others. Uh, so that number uh, again is uh, intentionally kept like that, so that people can grow, so that people can uh, you know uh, have 
uh, effective fellowship. Uh, so the numbers kept that way so that it doesn't really become too big. So there is no personal time with each other. Right? So it, it's a small, that's why we call it a small group. Uh, it's intentionally kept, kept that way. Then the other feature that we see is that they are growing, they are maturing, they are committed to that one cell group. You now there could be reasons why, uh, you know, they might say, uh, okay, I'm not able to be part of this life group. You know, maybe I've moved to another house, which is not in the same area, which is in another area, which is fine. You know, you find another cell group in the area and uh, you be part of that. So here uh, we see that uh, they're committed to one cell group. So week after week or, uh, you know, once in two weeks, they're going to the same cell group, they're growing, okay? So that's when, you know, there is, there is quality fellowship, right? So they are knowing, they are getting to know, they are they are growing in the word of God, um, they are growing in their gifts and so on, they're in in the use of the gifts, and everything happens there. They are committed to one cell group. So what happens when they grow to maturity? Well, now they go get trained and go start their own cell groups. So they could, if they want, be part of this cell group or attend the cell group and then have their own, you know, if they have the time. You know, some people have the time saying, okay, I'll attend the cell group, okay, and I'll lead my own cell group. So one, you know, one day I attend this cell group that I'm part of, which has another cell group leader. But on another day, I am leading my cell group for which I'm the cell group leader. So, so all the cell group leaders and appointing of leaders and training of leaders, um, it does it happens in an orderly manner, right? So the cell group leader might suggest to the pastor saying, "Okay, here's this person. We feel that you know, he or she has grown and uh, is is good to be a leader." So, so then you know suggests and and then the pastor also observes and talks and says, "Okay, why don't we?" No, why don't you get trained? And after that, it's a the training is not you know it's a long term long drawn thing, but just to make sure that the basics are in place, um, the fundamentals are understood, and also the vision of the cell church is firm. Right? So people don't start something and do something on their own, and uh, you know. Uh, well, there is a lot of you know flexibility, uh, a lot of creative things, but the big vision, the big picture, is that it is a model for discipleship. Now, that's something that that should not change. So, yeah, okay. So all that happens, right? So then the goal of this this cell group model or cell church model is to make disciples. Okay. So we looked at the Great Commission. We saw the Lord Jesus saying. Therefore, go and make disciples. We, so we we learned a few things from there, right? We said, okay, it's not just to uh, win believers, but to but to make disciples. We know that making disciples is a process because we we looked at how the Lord Jesus made disciples. Like he chose them, he was with them, he you know they served together, they spent time together, etc. So it's a process of making disciples we need to understand that right? the cell group meeting is one of the ways to facilitate that process okay so a lot of discipling personal involvement it takes place between the cell group leader and the members um, outside of the cell group meeting okay the cell group meeting might happen on a, on a let's say it happens every friday okay every friday night the cell group meets okay so during the cell group meeting also there is a lot of you know things that are happening uh, there's a lot of discussion there's a lot of question and answers there's a lot of sharing personal testimonies all that happens and outside of that right when the cell group leader meets people or maybe gives a call and talks to people in the cell group that also is part of the discipling making process right okay so then um, 
okay, some information about cell groups, they could either meet weekly or once in two weeks, okay? And uh, so what happens if people, let's say I have 12 people in my cell group, and each of them at various points have grown to be cell group leaders and now started their own cell groups, okay? So maybe they are not able to attend the cell group meeting, which, which I'm having, but they are now grown to start their own life groups, their own cell groups. Um, so all the 12 are starting their own life cell groups, they've moved out. So now I'm free to take on 12 more, right? I'm free to take on uh, 12 other people to be part of this so that I can continue that same process, um, bring them up to a level where they can start their own cell groups. So this whole process continues, okay? Now, some might want to attend, and have their own cell groups, which is fine, which is okay. Uh, but if they don't want to, that is also okay. Okay, so there's no false sense of commitment. So which means that even during the course of these meetings, this vision or this methodology needs to be shared with people in the cell group saying, okay, hey, this is what we'd like to do, you know, at some point in time, when you're ready, you can start your own cell groups. It's not necessary that you need to be part of it when you when you start your own cell group. Well, if you're welcome to, but it's not necessary. But this is what we'd like to do over a period of time. Everybody grows up to start their own cell group. So, so you see, you know, let's say there are twelve people, and each start their groups of twelve. You see how many people are being discipled. Okay, I think that's what we see in this. Um, you know, you let's say you have one with 12 and each of the 12 if they have their own groups of 12 you see how the um how effectively you're able to disciple others right um well as a single person you know this yellow dot that you see here as a as a person maybe able to do 12 or maximum you know 15 but then if the other 12 are able to do the same thing to others, then you see 12 into 12, 144, um, you know, uh, is the number or uh, the number of people who are actually being disabled, right? So actively, intentionally being discipled to follow Christ and that same path of from being disciples to leaders, disciple, minister to leader. Right. So then it becomes, it results in a, a strong church, a church that is, you know, based on the word, the church that is committed, uh, a church that is uh, where the where everyone is accountable, right? Where the challenges that they face, you know, there are there are people to pray for them. They are they're able to, um, you know, um, whatever their challenges are, they are being they are able to help them whatever the needs are, they're able to help. So all this happens when we have this kind of a model. If it's working well, you know, we need to make sure that it's working well. So that's the thing. Okay, here are some differences between uh, cell, between that cell group model and a care cell, okay? So in the cell group model, the goal is discipleship. So that's the first thing. It, the goal is disciple making, okay? Whereas in a care cell, it could be evangelism, it could also be fellowship, right? So it could be like people are saying, okay, hey, I, there is this meeting that is happening, why don't you come? So, you know, you could be inviting colleagues from office, you could be inviting other family members and saying, okay, there is this meeting in this people's home, in this person's house, would you like to come? Would you like to attend so it can be uh, you know it will be a, a, a way to share the gospel right so primarily that's the that's the thing which is happening that's the emphasis every time people gather together there is a the gospel being shared and you know that happens and secondly it's also a time of fellowship you know people are meeting catching up talking to one another and all it, it's all good things right but you see the difference right um in a, in the cell group model the cell leader's responsibility is to disciple the cell members, develop them as leaders, and equip them to make to become disciple makers. So that's the focus, right? So how can I 
disciple them ex effectively? How can I grow these people effectively? Now that will be the, that is what is going on in the cell leader's mind. Okay, so the cell leader does things in order to uh, in order to equip the others. Um, he does things to minister to them. Uh, of course, there is also you know taking care of needs and you know solving with problems and uh, etc. Praying, uh, interceding, etc. But the thing is, always the big picture is always how can I equip you to be a leader? You know, so so that you can grow in order to um, disciple others. Right. So how can you follow the Lord effectively so that you can come to a place of leading others effectively to follow the Lord? Right. So that's the that's the difference. So here, uh, if it's a care cell, the the leader's responsibility is to conduct the meeting. You know the cell meeting, making sure they might have different speakers, right? They might have some, you know, they might invite different people to speak in the cell, a care cell meeting, and others come to listen. So that you know, the, the, so the cell leader is responsible either for sharing himself or herself, or sharing the word, or making arrangements so that others will share. Okay, so it is not again, you know, I just want to emphasize that. These are good things that are happening, you know. Uh, it is a good thing, but that is, it is not, uh, you know, the vision of the cell church, right? So that we need to know the difference, right? Okay, so here in a, in a cell church, each person is committed to one cell group. Uh, when we say cell leader, we are, we are effectively saying that they're part of that cell group. They are committed to that cell group, okay? Whereas in a care cell, now you can visit any castle. So it's just that on a Wednesday or on a Friday, you visit a castle, you be part of it. Right? Well, here, each cell grows up to 12. Each person starts their own cell while continuing to remain part of the original cell if they want to. right? But here, when the numbers increase, they become two groups. Let's say the group becomes you know 20 or 30. then they start to, you know, they start becoming uh, two groups, and you know, uh, uh, the the group divides itself to accommodate more and more people. Right? Here, every person eventually will become a cell group leader and lead others and disciple twelve others. Whereas here in a castle. Well, the person can attend for various reasons. You know, I want to maybe uh, have this time of fellowship. I want to be there with other believers during the week and not really think about equipping oneself to become a leader. Okay, so one need not necessarily become a leader when it comes to a castle. So that's the you know that's the basic difference. Some of the main differences that we see for the APC twelve um, cell group model uh, of uh, cell church, and then when you compare it with the care cell model, right? Okay. So why why twelve people? Well, uh, we we see in scripture certain examples of twelve disciples, twelve tribes, um, etc. You know the way God governs. Uh, we see you know several scriptures, um, but you know it is uh, we're not going you know too deep into that. But when we say look at twelve, well there is scriptural evidence, and also practically it's it's a workable thing, right? So it's a workable thing in the sense that um, you're able to meet, you're able to it's a manageable, workable number of people. Which one individual can can take care of, okay. So um, so that's why it is twelve. Okay. So we'll take a break, and then probably you might have some questions. We'll take answer, take some time to answer questions, and then we'll look at what happens in a cell group meeting. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll take a break right now. <laughs> 